continue to make sure Israel has the tools and the capabilities that they need to defend themselves. And the ceasefire right now is only going to benefit them. The UN Security Council had a meeting. The Arab groups uh, condemned killing civilians, but also said that uh, we should support a peace process instead of sending uh, weapons to Israel if we want to support Israel. Do you envisage, envisage a scenario whereby uh, the hostages will be released, uh, Hamas will be disarmed, and some kind of international conference will take place uh, soon? I, I couldn't begin to speculate on that. I, you know, uh, that, that's, uh, th that, those are potential steps that haven't happened yet and, and may not happen. All I can tell you is we're going to continue to make sure Israel has the tools and the capabilities that they need to defend themselves. We're going to continue to try to get that humanitarian assistance in. We're going to continue to try to get hostages and, and people out of Gaza uh, appropriately. Uh, and as I think you've heard us say, um, a ceasefire right now really only benefits Hamas. Uh, that's where we are right now. And I, I understand the question, but I'm just not going to get ahead of where things are. There is no scenario to avoid, to avert the war now. That was my point, really. There is no other scenario to avoid, to avert There's the war. There's already combat between Israel and Hamas. Uh, if what you're saying, to avert a ground incursion, that is a question for the Israeli Defense Forces. They get to make the decisions about what operations they're going to conduct or not. Uh, we don't believe that uh, a ceasefire right now um, is, is uh, what we would believe that a ceasefire right now is only going to benefit Hamas. Israeli officials have told CNN that they do not support any transfer of fuel into Gaza, which Hamas has said is required for any sort of deal to release hostages. Does the U.S. support that position? Separate and distinct from the hostage situation and what we're doing to try to get them out. And I want to be careful that I'm not talking about the specifics of the conversations that are going into getting these people out, lest I say something that makes it harder to do it in the future. Put that aside for a second. We have said, continue to say, that fuel is an important commodity for life and sustainment in Gaza for the Palestinian people that are still there. And we know that fuel is a precious commodity that's running out, and you need it for genera generators and hospitals. You need it to run the desalination pumps so that you can drink fresh water and not seawater. Um, all of that is important. Uh, and so we're going to continue to work with partners in the region. We're going to continue to push for... Uh, for fuel to get in. Uh, now, look, that said, I said this again yesterday, we certainly understand Israeli concerns about the possibility for Hamas to abscond with fuel and use it for their own purposes and not allow it to be used in hospitals and desalination plants. We understand that. That is a legitimate concern. No question about it, which is why, again, Ambassador Satterfield is on the ground working this so hard. There's a, there's a balance here that has to be achieved. Obviously, we haven't achieved it yet. But we still believe, just in general, that fuel needs to be able to get into the, to, to the people of Gaza.